Hello friends, in this session we are going to discuss about the serial in serial out shift registers working. In the previous session we discussed the concept of serial in serial out shift register in a great detail. In case you want to view what a shift register, what a particular type of serial in serial out shift register is, please view the previous video. Also in the previous series or in this basically previous series of lectures we have viewed, we have known the details of a shift register in case you know, want to go through those basics please go through those videos let's start with the working of this particular shift register so over here we have one of the data inputs which is 1011 and i've already labeled these data bits as d2 d uh, sorry d3 d2 d1 d0 which means that this d3 is nothing but a most significant bit and this D0 is your least significant bit, right? So now the data to be stored is kept in this format, which is 1011. And I'm going to slowly push these data bits at this input point since we have only one input point over here. So I'm going to put them bit by bit over here. And we saw that if I want to fetch the same thing at the output, then I al always have to start from what? Left to right. But let's for practice, let's see what happens if we start from right hand side. So let's start it from right hand side, which is 1011. I'll be starting from this data bit, right? So what will happen is I'm just pushing this data bit in my FA1, which is first flip flop. So I have... In order to see the working with a greater clarity, what I've done is I have taken this column as my clock pulse, these as the outputs of various uh, flip-flops at this particular clock pulse. So initially all are set to zero and the clock pulse is also zero, right? So let's say after the triggering of the first, click, uh, flip, uh, first clock pulse, what will happen is I had already entered this one over here. Right. So after one clock pulse, what will happen? This D will shift it over here. How will it shift? We know that D with an input 1 after one clock pulse will generate the output as 1. Right. So Q3 will become 1. And since Q3 is connected to this, so this flip-flop automatically gets its input as 1. But at, at the end of first flip, uh, clock pulse, since only this had an input before the beginning of this clock pulse, only this generated as output 1 and the rest of the flip-flops since they had no input, so the state, the output state remains as the previous state which is 0, right? Now, at this point what will happen in at the end of first clock pulse, this has as input 1 which was the output of this, right? And this is nothing but your D0, since we started from D0. And now I would enter my next data bit over here, which is D1. Fine, clear enough. So now we have D1 over here, which I'm entering right now. And this is the output of the previous flip-flop, right? So at the end of second clock pulse, what will happen is, what will happen is this will be generated as the output over here. So this will be given as D2, uh, D0, which will now become the input to this flip-flop. This gets shifted over here. So this becomes D1. And we enter what? D2 over here. Right. So this is shown over here in the outputs that D0 now gets shifted over here as input. And it becomes the output Q2. Q2 becomes D0, which is 1. Q3 becomes 1, which is D1. Now we have given it the input as what? D2. So the output is already D1. And now we can just simply figure it out uh, with the common pattern, which is the bits are getting shift getting shifted one by one on the right hand side, right? So what will happen at the next turn? At the end of next clock pulse, 0, which is the next data bit, will get shifted over here. 1 will get shifted on the right hand side, which will become Q2. And Q1 will become 1. And there will be no change in Q0. Because 
this flip flop has now got its first input so it will generate output at the next run right so finally at the end of fourth clock pulse what will happen the uh, last input data bit which is d3 will become the output q3 this gets shifted over here this here this here so at this point what we have that the entire register now stores this entire data input so that means at the end of four clock pulses we have got our first output first of all because q0 has now achieved its first output right so since the output point was only one so i have now achieved my first output so at the end of fourth clock pulse i am getting my first output data bit and also at the end of fourth clock pulse only i have been able to uh, feed my complete data into this register right and another thing is now since i have achieved only my first data bit over here i have achieved only first data bit over here at the end of fourth clock uh, clock pulse that means in order to retrieve all the remaining data bits i'll be needing one clock pulse per data bit right because i'll have to shift them one by one so that means to get my remaining three data bits i'll require three more clock pulses right so in general if i could summarize it would be that for an n bit input we would need n clock pulses for feeding my input and n minus 1 extra clock pulses to obtain the complete output as per the discussed example there will be 4 and 3 respectively so the total clock pulses required will be 2n minus 1 which is nothing but n plus n minus 1 from the above pattern and since the total time gap required for a particular bit between the bit is inputted as an input and obtained as an output is n the total delay offered for each data bit will be n into tp if i consider tp to be the propagation delay of one clock pulse so that's all for this session of serial and serial out shift registers working please stay tuned for other informative videos in case you have any doubt please post them as comment below in case you like the video please like it thank you and stay tuned